Please welcome Dr. Ruth Goodwin Groen, Managing Director of the Better Than Cash Alliance, to the podium. Ambassador Holiday, Your Excellencies, members of the Better Than Cash Alliance, friends of the Better Than Cash Alliance who are here in DC, and just friends. It's great to see you all here today. It's my honor to be representing the Better Than Cash Alliance globally and to be kicking off this session this afternoon. For those of you who don't know us, the Better Than Cash Alliance is a global alliance based at the United Nations that now has over 55 governments, oh, I shouldn't do that, should I? Companies and international organizations that are all committed to moving away from cash to some form of digital payment. It can be mobile phone, can be a card, can be online, can be a combination of any of those. We're agnostic as to what form of mobile, I mean, digital payment it is, as long as it has a digital footprint. <laughs> And we work with our members to accelerate the transition from cash to the to form of digital payment, whatever is appropriate in each market. For those of you who uh, remember your Economics 101, Douglas North was right that the, the, the social norms have to be built on for, do come in, you're welcome for building the foundations for an inclusive economy. And that's why we're here today, because at the World Bank Spring meetings, the theme is building resilient and inclusive economies. And so I'm going to give you three numbers that illustrate building inclusive and resilient economies from our experience at the Better Than Cash Alliance. There'll be prizes afterwards who can tell me what the three numbers represent. 500 billion, million, 3 billion, and 3 trillion. 500 million, 3 billion, and 3 trillion. So the first one is 500 million. It comes from a study that we did with the government of Tanzania on person to government payments. They have done a lot of work on digitizing payments and if that trajectory continues, we estimated with them that they could increase domestic resource mobilization by approximately 500 million. The actual number is 477, but it's all estimates, so give or take. But this is, for an economy like Tanzania's, approximately 1% of GDP. If you could increase 1% GDP annually, compound that, that makes a massive difference if we're talking about building a more resilient economy. A specific example, Tanzania, everyone knows, earns about 13% of its GDP from tourism, hard currency. For some of the cons conservation parks that introduce digital payments, they reduce the leakages there by over 40%. This is hard currency that tourists like all of you here go to the Ngorogor Trader and want to go and see the lions and the giraffes. If that money goes to the Tanzanian government coffers, not into people's pockets, it will help build, a, it can be used to help build a more resilient economy. So that's the 500 million number. The next one, the 3 billion number. You know actually that the 3 billion and the 3 trillion have to come from India and China, right? There's no other economy that can deal with those numbers so significantly. And so our friends who work in India know well the largest cash transfer scheme in the world. LPG, right? Everyone knows that in India, the LPG subsidy program. Since 2014, they have been digitizing those, those payments. And according to the Indian government's direct benefit transfer data, they estimate that they have saved, oh, there's a T missing. It's not $3, it's three, sorry, a B missing. It's three billion in the past three years by leakage reduction. And so, there are 78 other schemes that they're tracking. I've just picked the LPG one because that's a really big number. And as a result, they are increasing the opportunities for building resilience in the economy, but also building inclusion because the money is going directly into accounts. And so for those of you who know the Indian government well, you know that it's not a panacea for all ills. You know that it's not going to be the solution to everything, 
but it is a first step. It's building financial inclusion, it's building the accounts, it's putting the transfers in, and then that will build for the future. I want to be super clear, this is not a panacea, but it's a first step to building inclusion and access to a range of financial services for those uh, recipients of the LGB LGP subsidy. Thank you for whoever's helping me there. The last one on three trillion, yeah, China, right? We had just released a study last, yesterday, right? Yesterday it came out, for those of you who follow our accounts. Alipay and WeChat together enabled $3 trillion of payments. We're not advocating for Alipay or WeChat or anything, we're just showing what digitizing can do or can contribute to an economy. That has the number there working with that, uh, the 236 billion potential increase in GDP if that trajectory continues. We're just showing there what a difference it can make to an economy, to building a more resilient and inclusive economy. There are stories in our report about how it is improving the lives of individual small-scale entrepreneurs, how it is contributing to a range of different economic opportunities. And so, in t if you're looking for ways that can actually move forward in building resilient and inclusive economies, digitizing payments is something that can be done. It's not going to solve all your problems, believe me, but it's something that can be done right now. And so, in conclusion, I want to explain a little bit that what we're talking about is inclusive digital economies. So by inclusion, we mean everyone. We mean that those who have been excluded are now part of the economy, particularly women. We know that there is a gender gap both in access to technology as well as in financial services. And so if you're going to be designing products, payment products that serve, it has to work for everybody not just for men, not just for women, for old and young, for people who are in remote rural communities, as well as people who live in urban centers. So it's an inclusive economy, and it has to be an ecosystem. It has to, so that if you receive your direct benefit transfer onto a card or an, a, a mobile phone, then you can then use that card at the local store to pay the school fees. So you have a whole ecosystem that works. That's how we use our financial services. And it won't be the same anywhere, but it will be appropriate to that market. So it has to work for everybody, and it has to be done responsibly. For us at the Better Than Cash Alliance, and for many who work in the financial inclusion community, by responsible payments, we mean payments that actually serve customers in the way that address their needs. I've got our guidelines here. For those of us who work in development, they seem to be blindingly obvious, but for those who are new, who are developing innovative products, it's a very useful guideline to say, well, how is there a recourse mechanism? Are you protecting client data? Think about these things so you don't have problems down the track. So an inclusive digital ecosystem that is uh, responsible in the way that it treats clients. So in conclusion, if you're looking for ways to build resilient and inclusive economies, then you can, one place that you can start that will actually make a difference is by moving away from cash to some form of digital payment. There are lots of people with lots of experience here who uh, can uh, provide advice, and we're happy to provide advice. And also, of course, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation that have supported this, and Meridian here, are key partners in helping us do that. So thank you very much.